It was on September 10th, I saw a vision of Donald Trump and I heard this phrase, the comeback. Jesus, I just give this time to you. I thank you for speaking today through your Holy Spirit. I thank you for bringing clarity and freedom through this word, through the things that you're sharing here, Lord. And I ask that you would even go beyond what I'm able to say, and that you, Holy Spirit, would speak to people's hearts and give them the specific answers that they need about this issue, this topic, and anything that is standing between you and us, Lord. Anything in our hearts, God, that you would remove it and help us to set you, Jesus, on the throne of our hearts, because that's where you deserve to be. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. All glory is yours, Jesus. And I thank you today for helping us, your body, in Jesus' name. Okay, y'all, so I heard a prophetic word about Donald Trump, and I shared a word a while back called the Trump prophecy that no one wants to hear. Uh, this one is similar in some ways, so I'm going to title it Another Trump Prophecy That No One Wants to Hear. And this is interesting because... Yes, I heard a word about what God is doing for Trump right now and something that's going to be happening, but I also heard the Holy Spirit specifically ask me to answer some questions that people have had about Trump, about the church, about the Trump prophecies, about all of these things. So the Lord spoke to me before I started, and he said those two words that I prayed for, uh, freedom and clarity. That's what I believe God is going to be sharing with us today. It, some people, you're going to be getting set free from some things, maybe some lies or some deception the devil's been able to use in your life. Other people, you're going to be getting clarity, and there's going to be some aspects of God that you've been putting into a box that I believe God is going to break open in this video. So this is going to be very candid, but I'm simply listening to the Holy Spirit, and my prayer is that he would be able to speak and do and move in any way that he wants to. So this is part of what I heard. The Lord is asking me to do the question and answer part first and then to, to finish sharing the rest of the prophetic message that I heard. The Lord said, I want you to address this. Address it as if you have nothing to lose. And then he said, answer people's questions, the ones they've had about Donald Trump and the reason why so many prophets have spoken about him up until now. And then the Lord also said, be 100% fearless and bring clarity to the issue. Let people know I'm speaking about him, but that not everything even my people have said about him is true. And so this is what the Lord asked me to do, y'all. I know that some people are going to be happy about this word. Other people are not going to be happy about it. I know that some people listening to me love Donald Trump. Some people hate Donald Trump. Okay, so I'm not trying to make anyone happy here. I'm just trying to be obedient to what the Lord is asking me to say, okay? So if you're not happy, that's the reason why. I love you, and I hope you can show me grace nonetheless. Here's the thing, y'all. Even if we disagree on something like this, as Christians, I believe we can still be united around the message of the gospel, and we should be. There should be no issue that's greater than the issue of the gospel within the true church that brings disunity to the church. Because as soon as that happens, the devil is winning. We need to be united around the message of the gospel. We need to say, hey, I don't even care if you disagree with me on this issue because Jesus is the one who matters and the gospel is, is what is most important for us to be involved in doing and sharing. And the more that we can work together, the better. So that's where I believe we should be as, as believers. Uh, these are some questions people ask and I may bring up some more questions that the Holy Spirit leads me to. This was about six months ago. Someone asked, how can you explain that your quote unquote servant of God will be indicted very soon in the Georgia case? So this was part of the word I shared a while back in that, that video I referenced. And there was a part of that word where the Lord referred to Trump as his servant. And that's what they're referencing here. Here's another question uh, that's on the same lines. And they said, God told you that Donald Trump is his servant. Can you then explain why God would pick a man who swears so much and says such awful things about others as his servant. He's very sinful. Can you please offer an explanation for this? So yes, I am going to answer this question here. And this is what the Lord has shown me personally, but also it's what we see in the word of God as well. What does Jesus say? He says, you will know them by their love for one another, talking about believers. But the word also shows us that we will know true believers by their fruit. Uh, you know, a bad tree is not going to bear good fruit. A good tree is not going to bear bad fruit is what Jesus says. So 
even if someone like Donald Trump claims to be a Christian or claims to have had a salvation experience, if the fruit is not evident, and, and I'm not just talking about the direct actions that they take, I'm talking about the way that they take the actions, like you know, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. If the fruit of the Spirit is not evident in their life, but also the actions that you would take, walking in line with the will of God, the ways of God, the standard of God. If these things are not in someone's life, that's an evidence that they haven't actually been transformed or they haven't actually received salvation in Jesus Christ. So politicians oftentimes will use a form of religion as a point of connection with the people that they are trying to serve or the people that they are trying to impress in many cases So do I believe that Donald Trump is a Christian? Not necessarily. Now, some people are going to get real upset about that. But listen, just because someone says they're a Christian does not make them a Christian. Look at the fruit. Examine the fruit. And some people say, yes, but look, he stands on all these issues. He stands on those issues because you want him to, and he wants to keep his people happy. This is the cold, hard truth today. And I know I'm not making people happy about this. Now, with that being said, could he still be a Christian? Sure. I don't know. He could be in this place of receiving Christ and, and the Lord is just beginning to work on his heart. But from where I, I'm sitting, I don't see the fruit, right? And many people would ask that same thing. Why does he act this way if he's supposed to be a Christian, right? And listen, don't judge a politician by a different standard than you would judge yourself or that you would judge someone else in the church. If your pastor said that they're a Christian, but then they, you know, they mistreated people and they lied and all these things constantly... You would have to stop and question, has that transformation actually taken place? And if it has, there's not a lot of signs of maturity there yet, right? So we need to be, as Christians, honest with ourselves about what we're believing about other people. That doesn't mean we go around being super judgmental all the time, but we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And we need to not judge what we're seeing by a standard other than the word of God. This is John 6, 70, okay? Jesus answered them, Did I myself not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? So this is an answer to that question. Well, if he's not a Christian, right? Or at least if he's not acting like one, why would God call him his servant? Why would he even use him? And the answer is, all throughout scripture, God uses people who are not in line with his will in order to perform his will. God pulls the strings. God's behind the curtain. He can use anybody, Christians and non-Christians. And uh, if you have a problem with that, I encourage you just read the Old Testament and see what God does. God even uses Balaam, a false prophet, a diviner, somebody who's not even operating under the spirit of God to bless the children of Israel. Why? Because even though Balaam had a little bit of power in, you know, the supernatural realm, because he's probably listening to demonic forces or whatever it was, it's like, or making stuff up, whatever it was, even though he he had a little bit of influence there or weight, God superseded that. He, he overrode that. He said, nope, you're not going to curse them. I'm not going to let you. You're going to bless them. And so God was able to use even a false prophet to bless the children of Israel. Why? Because God is sovereign and God is in control. And at the end of the day, what he says goes. That's the way it is. So we even see this with Jesus and Judas, right? Why would Jesus let Judas hang around? Jesus didn't just let Judas hang around. Jesus says, I chose you, the 12. Jesus chose Judas. So Jesus said, Judas, you're going to be my servant. (laughs) You're going to help us. Even though Judas had not chosen Jesus. And he was deceiving the other disciples. He wasn't deceiving Jesus. Jesus knew exactly who he was. But the other disciples thought that he was on the same page, and he wasn't. And we saw the fruit come out of that. We saw the fruit of that, right? Isaiah 45, 1. Many people have referenced this concerning Trump before. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed. So this is King Cyrus of Persia and uh, Babylon. And it says, Whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him. So God took this pagan king by the hand in order to help him subdue nations. What are we seeing here? We're seeing God's sovereignty. If God could work through King Cyrus, who was not a godly king, he could work through Donald Trump, who in a lot of ways is not a godly man. Now, does he support Christian values? Does he support conservative values that that, uh, some of them are in line with God's word? Absolutely. 
I've seen him do that. Many people have seen him do that. And I believe that's part of the reason why God is using him in, in this time. That's what God is using him for. There's this, this stirring up of, of yes, uh, you know, conservatives in one sense, but there's also a stirring up of the church. Now, here's the problem. And I sense this from the Holy Spirit right now. We can get mixed up in the stirring and we can go down a path that God is not calling us as Christians to. Why? Because the political sway and the conservative sway can become a louder voice in our lives and and can have more direction over our heart than the voice of God and the Word of God. The word I shared before, um, the Trump prophecy no one wants to hear. Essentially, if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to go watch it. But essentially, the message I got was on one side, God was saying he is using Trump. And he has spoken to people about him. And then on the other side, he was saying, but many of my people are idolizing him and, and are looking to him for something they shouldn't look to him for. I'm going to share this. And this is not, a, I've shared this before. This is not to condemn the person that said it. If you're the one that said it, I'm not saying this to make you upset. I'm using it as an example because we need to see what's been happening in the church as believers. In that video, I, I talked about, I, I shared that prophetic message God gave me about some Christians idolizing Trump. And one of the comments I got in response was, we're not idolizing him, he's just our savior. And I read that comment, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. Because the idolatry was so deep and so like, I don't know, they were so blinded to it, they couldn't even see that calling someone your savior, is that is idolatry. Like looking to him as the savior, Jesus is the savior. Jesus is the Savior. Now, can God use people in that role in smaller ways? Like a, you know, like going back to uh, the Revolutionary War, you know, George Washington. Can God use people where in these places of um, heroism, I guess I should say? Yeah. To deliver a people or something like that physically, yes. But ultimately, Jesus is the only Savior that we actually need. And he's the only savior that should have say over our lives and what choices we make, how we choose to live, the state of our heart. We should be as Christians in a place where we say, Jesus, if this idea is not in line with your will for my life, I don't want it. I'm throwing it out. But the problem is politically, many times we get so sucked into the narrative that we exalt our political ideas above the voice of God. And we just assume that because it's a conservative idea or something like that, that God is going along with it. It's not always true. That's not always true. Now, is God pro-life? 100%. There are things about the conservative view that I believe are in line in some ways with scripture. And there's a reason why Christians majority of the time vote conservatively. But does that mean that everything under the conservative banner is from the Lord? No. Why? Because people are corrupt on both sides, <laughs> on every side. There are corrupt people. that are making corrupt decisions. Not everybody, but majority of people. And we need the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need the Word of God to show us what's actually true and where we're supposed to actually stand. This is... Uh, it's another question I've gotten. Why is God speaking about Trump so much? Why, right? And uh, the prophetic word I'm about to share in a moment will answer this to an extent. But also, here's my answer from what I've seen in Scripture. How does God work in the earth? It's through His Word. You know, He speaks and things are, are created. It's through His Spirit. He's working through the church today through His Spirit. He also works through His angels. You know, they are His messengers. In Scripture, we see that they go and they do things for God. And He works through people, he works through Christians and non-Christians. He works through people. So God can speak about the things that he's doing. God can speak about the people that he's working through. Why is God speaking about Trump so much? At the end of the day, specifically, I don't know. God's doing something there. That's the only reason. That's the only thing I need to know. And, and there have been times where I've been tempted to not listen to the Lord because he's speaking about somebody like Trump a controversial subject like that where I've been tempted to get up and walk out of the room and not listen, you know, like be like, well, Lord, let's not do this today. Right. And it's just not what God has called me to do. It's not what God has called his people to do. If God speaks, he speaks for a reason. There, there's a weight behind it. There's a purpose to it. 
and I'm not the I am not in charge of deciding what God says. I you know people like me, we just deliver the mail. We don't write the mail, <laughs> right? And we're not even always great at delivering it. You know, like, but God knows what He's doing. This is uh, another question. And then I'm gonna share that word. Is it possible to believe God is using Trump without idolizing President Trump, but fully understanding that the Lord is using him to point out what's been going on in this country? Absolutely. Yeah, I believe it's possible to believe that God is using Trump without idolizing him. But this is the only thing I sense from the Lord to say about this. Only you and God know what's going on in your heart. And only me and God know what's going on in my heart. People look at the outside, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I sense this from the Lord some, right now. He's saying some of my body, some Christians have been judged by other believers based on the stance that they've taken around concerning Donald Trump and, and the things that are happening there. And the Lord is saying, don't worry about what they have said about you. Just worry about what I say. Just be concerned with what I say. That's what ultimately matters. Now, the Lord is not telling you to idolize him. The Lord's not saying that. But, but in some cases, some people have been rejected. And I'm sensing this from the Lord. Many people have faced rejection even in their own family and those close to them because of some of the things that they've said, some of the stances that they've taken. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. You just settle into what I have given you to do and say. The Lord's also saying, don't extend and do something I'm not asking you to do. That's another issue that can arise. When we don't focus on unity, we can misuse and mismanage what God has said to us, what he's spoken to us. And we can begin to make waves where God's not even asking us to make waves. We can begin to break down the connection point between other believers when God's not asking us to do that. Trump is not the hill that God is asking anyone to die on. The only hill he's asking us to take our stand on is the hill of Calvary. It's the gospel message. I sense the Holy Spirit saying, in some cases, this is the only thing that's gone wrong. You've heard from the Lord about Trump. You've sensed the Spirit speaking about him and there's the Spirit doing something there. You've seen what God is doing, even in this nation, through some of the things that, he's, that God has used him to do. But you've taken it a little too far, and the Lord is saying. And you've simply mismanaged a sense of the Lord saying, the ways in which I'm expecting you to show other people what I'm doing. And the Lord's saying, you don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to show everybody. You just be led by my spirit and walk in unity with the believers that are around you. And the Lord is saying, in some cases, some of my people need to say, I'm sorry for the way I handled this. And the Lord's saying, some people, you need to go to the people that you offended when you didn't mean to, but you got into the heat of the debate or the heat of the battle and you said some things, the Lord is saying that you probably shouldn't have said. The Lord is saying, that's okay. I've forgiven you. My grace is sufficient for you today. Now you go to them and you make it right. And don't bring it up again when you're making it right. Don't say, you know, I'm sorry, but I was right. Just say, I'm sorry. Just let it go. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone. You walk in unity with those I've placed around you, the Lord is saying. Okay, so this is, this is what I heard. Um, I, I saw... Uh, this was on September 10th. I saw a vision of Donald Trump, and I heard this phrase, the comeback, and then I heard the phrase rising up. So before I share this next part, does this mean that Trump is going to become president again, that he's going to be uh, win in 2024? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not prophesying that. I'm only prophesying what I've heard. Okay? I'm, I'm not connecting dots here. I have to be faithful to share what God has shared with me, not to take it to some a place that God hasn't said, okay? Now, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. I'm just saying, this is what I heard. The comeback, rising up. And then I heard this song being sung. In my spirit, I could hear this song being sung. The Eye of the Tiger song. And specifically, I heard the phrase, I'm back on the street. Then I heard the phrase, just a man in his will to survive. And then I began to hear the chorus, which goes like the eye of the tiger, the thrill of the fight, rising up to the challenge of our rivals, if, if I'm getting the chorus correct. But I was hearing this song being sung. And the Lord said, I want you to address this. And then I, I read that part earlier. And then this is the other part I haven't read. He said, some of my people have jumped to conclusions based on what they saw. 
And he said, just because I choose to speak about someone a lot does not mean everything will go your way. And he said, you can be in tune with my voice without being lined up with my heart. So I believe this is why we've seen some inconsistency in some cases with some of the prophetic words that were shared. And yes, I'm willing to say that because we need to be honest about what's going on in the church. Do I believe that God was speaking to prophets about Trump back in 2020? Yes. Do I believe that every person that said they heard from God actually heard from God? No. No. I believe in, uh, you know, Jesus said there's going to be many false prophets. So in some cases, people are just prophesying by another spirit, right? It's literally false prophecy. In other cases, people get so excited about a word that they just jump onto a bandwagon and they share the same things they hear other people hearing. And then in some cases, people, they heard from the Lord, but they interpreted it to mean something it didn't mean and they tried, tried to connect too many dots. And then in some cases, people heard very accurately and they shared it correctly. And then other people jumped to conclusions. <laughs> the, you know, the, sometimes it's like the hearer is the one that jumps to a conclusion. But the Lord is saying, just because I choose to speak about somebody a lot does not mean everything will go your way. You can be in tune with my voice without being lined up with my heart. So when you hear a prophetic word, you must judge it by the scripture, but then you also need to be willing to submit the interpretation of that word to the Holy Spirit. No word of prophecy is open to interpretation by people. The Spirit is the one, the Holy Spirit, he's the one that gets to interpret it. So when we say, well, this means this is gonna happen this way, we need to take a step back and go, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't, if you knew it was from the Lord and it doesn't happen the way you expected it to, then you say, Holy Spirit, what did that mean? What are you showing me here? Listen, God doesn't speak randomly. There's a point to it. And sometimes people will hear a word of knowledge, but then they won't wait in the presence. They won't receive the prophetic message that goes with it. What does the word say? It says, in these last days, God has spoken through his son. See, true prophecy, and, and Revelation says, Jesus Christ, he is the spirit of prophecy. True prophecy is always going to point back to Jesus. Knowing the real God through believing what Jesus did at the cross and through receiving the Holy Spirit into our lives. So if you don't hear anything else I say <laughs> today, my hope is that you would hear this. The Word of God says those who hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. If you've put your hope in anything else, take it back out of that thing and put it back into the Lord. Go to Jesus personally today. Say, Lord, I want to walk with you personally today. I want to hear your voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I want to hear your voice. I want to say yes to your spirit. I want my heart to line up with yours. You are here for a good purpose. You're on this earth today, in this day and age, for a good reason. You have a purpose to fulfill. You have a reason that you're here. And God is working through his saints today in order to shine the light of Jesus Christ to the nations. And yes, he's even using people like Donald Trump. He's using things like the prophetic scene. He's using things like the political arena. He's using all these things as vehicles to get the gospel message in front of more people than ever before. May that be our desire in our heart, to see people come to Jesus above every other desire that we have. I hope this message has encouraged you. If I stepped on your toes today, I'm sorry. I did not mean to, but I also I would ask that you would show me grace and that if there's something I said that rubbed you the wrong way, that you would ask the Holy Spirit personally. Say, Holy Spirit, did he get that right? Was that from you or was it not? And if, if it was from you, Lord, is there something about the way I'm viewing this that I need to change? We always need to be willing to be in that place of vulnerability with the Lord and to be molded by him. So I love y'all. I'll see you next time.